You're listening to the Gloves Off podcast, powered by IE Sports Radio, the show that brings you raw boxing debate, with your host, Marcus Los Great. What's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. We are coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement in a crispy white tee. We are brought to you by IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Church is now in session, but before we get started, I just want to give a huge shout out to you. Thank you guys for liking the videos, for subscribing to the videos, for sharing the videos. I am very grateful. Now let's get into this boxing. Let's talk about Anthony Joshua, Team Joshua. The fact of the matter is, is it doesn't matter if it's a bag coming with $50 million from Al Heyman. It doesn't matter if it's $100 million coming from the Saudis. For some reason, for some reason, Team Joshua has a problem accepting money to fight Deontay Wilder. This is an opinion. This is fact. This is an opinion. This is fact. How many times does this man have to decline money? Money that has not only been verified, money that is not only um, there, ready, and available to be spent. Money that everyone should be taking. Tyson Fury has no problem with Saudi money. Oleander Usyk has no problem with with, uh, Saudi money. You know, Canelo Alvarez doesn't have any problem with Al Heyman money. Floyd Mayweather didn't have any problem with Al Heyman money. All these sources of money, but they keep telling us that the money isn't good. At what point, at what point do we look at them and say they are the problem? Talk to me, UK. At what point do you guys start to realize that they've been the problem all along? That they've been the problem all along. Everyone is taking Saudi money at this point. Deontay, the bronze bronze bomber Wilder, is going out there to take Saudi money. Tyson Fury is taking Saudi money. At what point? Please tell me, because I don't understand it. We should we should have been had this Anthony Joshua Deontay Wilder fight five years ago. If they would have gave it to me two years ago, I would have been okay with it. We are now five years removed and still no Deontay Wilder fight. 
Still no Deontay Wilder fight. That is crazy. It's wild. And my question to UK fans, as I've been on you guys' helmet all week, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? This bus is never late. (laughs) I've been on your helmet all week long. You know what I'm saying? All week long, I'm like Lionel Richie. (laughs) At what point do you guys say it's Anthony Joshua? You guys remind me of cowboy fans. You guys are glutton for punishment. It doesn't matter what Anthony Joshua does. You guys are there to accept it. So I have to ask the question, at what point is enough enough? At what point do you wave the white flag? At what point do you throw in the towel? Talk to me, fight fans. Because the first time when he passed up the $50 million, when they said that there was some guy in Alabama with $50 million in a, in a duffel bag, that would have been enough for me. The same guy that was promoting Floyd Mayweather Jr. doesn't have $50 million? We talked about this. We talked about this then. And now, the Saudis have come. The Saudis, who have not only just given boxing money, they've given... PGA Tour money. They've given guys like, um, what is his name? Um, what is his name? Phil Mickelson. Phil Mickelson is taking their money. And now we got guys like Tyson Fury taking their money. And guys like Oleander Usyk taking their money. But yet, yet, their money is not good enough for Anthony Joshua. Wow. Just wow. You guys got to come up with an answer. We need answers. (laughs) We need answers. (laughs) Oh, man. We need answers. (laughs) That is, it's just disgusting. You know what I'm saying? At this point, if Anthony Joshua cannot fight Deontay Wilder with nothing on the line, I've come to the conclusion that I'm never going to get to see this fight. I've come to the conclusion of it. He's lost his belts. He's half of the draw that he used to be. And yet, we're still not getting the fight. Like I said, at this point, I have to come to the conclusion that I'm not going to get to see this fight. And that's quite unfortunate because I believe that it will be one of the most spectacular fights in boxing history. I believe that those two in the ring together would have been electric. That was a true pay-per-view fight. A true pay-per-view fight. And now we're sitting here with our hands in our pockets getting nothing. (laughs) Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> I just can't stand it. You know what I'm saying? I just can't stand it. All right, I'll get off your boy's head. All right, all right. I'll let him live, all right? All right? <laughs> I'll let him live. We'll move it on, okay? 
I'm going to move on to Roy Jones Jr. No, before I move on to Roy Jones Jr., we got to give a shout out to Canelo Alvarez. This man continues to show us level a game, a fight after fight, that there's levels to this game. That there's levels to this game. You know what I'm saying? I really didn't want to talk about this fight because Jamel Charlo just showed up. He just showed up. He had no intentions on fighting. He just showed up. And matter of fact, I'm going to change that a little bit. He showed up thinking what he's seen outside the ring would be the same thing that would happen inside the ring. That's like saying that you, you know, you watch how a lion tamer tames a lion. And you think that because you've seen it enough times that you could go in there and do the same thing. And you go into the cage and you get your hand bitten off by the lion. (laughs) Because you're not a lion tamer. (laughs) This man watched Canelo versus Ryder. And he said, oh, I could beat Canelo. Oh, I could beat Canelo. Well, when he got in there in that ring, he got eaten alive by Canelo. He realized that punches at 154 versus punches at 168 are completely different. I'm pretty sure this man brought in a 168 pounder couple of 168 pounders and sparred with them. I can guarantee you none of them hit like Canelo Alvarez because on, on Saturday, last Saturday, he was shocked. He was shocked. He was an utter shock. He was in, uh, he was, he was outside of his depths. And Canelo Alvarez ate him alive. He beat this man into submission and made him go into survival mode. And there's no, there's no, what is the word that I'm looking for? There is no shame in that. But at some point, I need Jamel Charlo to come out here. I need him to step in front to the to the congregation. And I need him to admit that there are levels. And that was just a level that he can reach. Canelo Alvarez is an all-time great. This man has continued to show us time and time again that he is an all-time great. We need to stop playing with Canelo Alvarez's name. He is an all-time great. Yes, he got beat by Floyd Mayweather, another all-time great. But there's no shame in that. There's no shame in that. These other boys cannot go toe-to-toe with Canelo. They see it. It looks basic. It looks easy. But once you step into the cage with the king, you will bow down. Moving on to Roy Jones Jr. Roy, I hate to do this, man. I really do. I really do. I really do. I hate to do this, man. Because I'm a Roy Jones Jr. fan. Matter of fact, many of my friends called me Roy uh, Roy Jones Jr. fanatic back in the day. Because the man could do no wrong in my eyes. The man was the man was basically, in my opinion, he was God disguised as a boxer. The the way that he did things was ridiculous. You know, and and you see fighters today, guys like, um, 
guys like Ellis. You know, you see guys like him and you see him doing the Matrix in the ring. You know by, by that, that that man watched Roy Jones Jr. as a young man. You know he was inspired by Roy Jones Jr. as a young man, just like Roy Jones Jr. was inspired by, by Muhammad Ali as a young man. But I got to keep it a stack. You know what I'm saying? He says everybody is scared to lose. He says nobody wants to fight the best. And this has to be, this has to be a situation where Roy Jones Jr. has amnesia. This has to be a, a, a situation where Roy Jones Jr. believes that we, we boxing fans, just started bo- watching boxing about five, ten years ago, that we boxing fans only started watching boxing um, you know, off of YouTube videos, you know, that we've only seen guys like Muhammad Ali fight on YouTube videos, that we only seen guys like Roy Jones Jr. fight on YouTube videos. No, sir, some of us have been watching boxing since we was five years old. Guys like me. And I remember during the Roy, Roy Jones Jr. era, people talking about a Roy Kai. I remember people calling you Reluctant Roy. I remember seeing you screaming at the top of your lungs on TV, ESPN, at Bernard Hopkins, screaming 60-40, I'll beat your ass. I remember that there was a guy at 175 pounds in the country of Germany who held the lineage championship at 175 pounds. Darius McCloskey that you didn't go out there to go see. That you demanded $10 million to fight that you demanded had to come fight you in America. I didn't have any problems with that. I didn't have any problems with you demanding 60-40 from, you know, Bernard Hopkins. But when we're out here screaming at the top of our lungs at these youngsters, you know, at the youngins, talking about the best should fight the best and that, that should be the only, that should be the only issue. That money shouldn't be an issue. Well, excuse me, Roy Jones Jr. When you were in your prime, when you was doing, when you were in charge of doing what you were capable of doing, those same things that plague today's era, it plagued your era, sir. You know, I know my eyes, I know my ears are now older. And they didn't work as good as they worked then. (laughs) But please, please, sir. I need your old ass to go sit down and stop crying about people being in your lawn. Okay. (laughs) Talking about in your day, everyone fought everyone. That's not true. It's no truer than the Sugar Ray, the Sugar Ray, um, the Sugar Ray Leonard era. They talk about in that era, everybody fought everybody. That's not true. You could pull that on people that haven't been following the sport for years. Us lifers know the truth. And I'm going to need you to sit down, sir. 
and allow the youngins to do what the youngins do. Because you did it too. I forgive you. I forgive you. I love you. But please, man, can we please change this narrative that all, oh, you know, in our day, in our day, you know, we, we, we used to get down. You did. You did the best. But there was also stuff that you left on the table. That Roy Jones Jr. versus Bernard Hopkins fight should have happened probably about five to six years earlier than it happened. That Darius McCloskey fight that never happened should have happened. You know, I'm just keeping it a stack, man. I'm not coming for your helmet. I'm just keeping it a stack. You know what I'm saying? I'm the dude that makes sure that everybody keeps it honest around here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a hater. I just make I just want everybody to keep it keep it a hundred. You know what I'm saying? The only the time that I'm not keeping it a hundred, then come for me. You know what I'm saying? I'll be waiting on you. Ryan Garcia is returning to the ring on December 2nd. The last time we seen him in the ring, he ended up getting knocked out by a body blow by Gervonta Tank Davis. Now he's moving to the 140 pound limit and his first fight is going to be Oscar Duarte. Fans aren't happy about this. They want him to fight Devin Haney in his first fight at 140. The nerve of boxing fans. The man just got out of the ring with Trevante Tank Davis. You guys are already trying to push him into the ring with Devin Haney. It's nonsense. It's utter nonsense. It makes zero sense. Some of you have called Oscar Durte a tomato can. The truth of the matter is, is that I want to say 80, probably even 90 percent of you guys probably haven't even seen Oscar Durte fight in a ring. And that's the part that is disgusting. <laughs> you call yourself fight fans. You call yourself lifers. But some of you lack some of you lack the work ethic. You know what I'm saying? I'm not call, I'm not going to call no names. I'm not going to call no names. I'm going to let you live today. You know what I'm saying? Today is Sunday and my Niners play the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to reserve that energy for that. I'm going to reserve that venom for that. All right? I'm going to let you live. <laughs> Just know, I see you. <laughs> Oscar has rattled off, rattled off 11 straight KOs. This is a good fight for Ryan Garcia. This kid is going to come forward. He's going to make Ryan fight. He's going to give us. He's going to give us. Something to see Ryan's repertoire that he has now underneath Derek James. He's going to give us an opportunity to see what Ryan Garcia is going to be under Derek James. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not mad at this fight. This is going to be a decent fight. It's not on pay-per-view. And it's going to give us all an opportunity to see Ryan Garcia. Which, speaking of pay-per-view, 
based on some of the comments that I've been seeing on, on the internet from a lot of you, you would think that this fight would be on pay-per-view because some of you are out here delusionally speaking as you always do. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like you guys get drunk and go on Twitter and just start typing a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I don't have a live feed, but I mean, <laughs> based on some of the things that I've seen some of you type, <laughs> it wouldn't be surprising if that were the case. Some of you are saying that Ryan Garcia carried the Davis Garcia pay-per-view. Some of you are claiming that Ryan Garcia is the real pay-per-view star. Interesting. It's interesting. Some of you are even saying that Ryan Garcia is the next massive draw behind Canelo Alvarez. Hmm. Huh. Well, you know, I wasn't always the smartest one in class. Not always the sharpest knife in the drawer. So then, you know, I decided to go do my research. And my research showed that Ryan Garcia is a draw. But how come if, you know, if he's what you guys claim that he is, how come he hasn't sold five million dollar gates regularly on his own? Hmm. 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 See, I've come to the conclusion that Ryan Garcia is popular. Ryan G Garcia just isn't Gervonta Tank Davis popular. Hmm. Hmm. See, Ryan Garcia is not Canelo Alvarez popular. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. See, Ryan Garcia moves the needle. You know, you can go ahead and pull up, you know, Google Analytics, YouTube Analytics. You'll see that Ryan Garcia definitely moves the needle. You know what I'm saying? If you don't believe that Ryan Garcia moves the needle, then I can't take you seriously. You're not you're not ready for this conversation, and that's okay. You're not ready for this conversation. But with that being said, Ryan Garcia, as he is today, today on Sunday at 10.38 a.m. October 8th, Ryan Garcia today is not a pay-per-view star. He could be in the future. Could be. But you guys are going to need to allow this man to develop. He's only 23 years old. And you guys are trying to push it way too early. You guys are trying to push him ahead of Tank. You guys are trying to push him ahead of um, Canelo. But there's, there's nothing to substantiate your claims. See, I understand that we're in the information age. I understand that we are in the age where you don't have to have sources. I understand that. But facts still matter. Facts still matter. They still matter. So I see what I see I see what you mean. I'm just saying you got to give him the time to do it. You got to give him the time to do it. Naoya anyway is returning to the ring. He's returning to the ring December 26 against Marlon Taples. This is going to be a decent, a decent fight. 
Marlon Taples is a live dog in my opinion. But the truth of the matter is, is this. I will never, and I do mean never, ever, 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 bet against Naola anyway after his complete de destruction of Stephen Fulton. I just can't do it, won't do it. No, sir. I believe that he is going to dominate Marlon Taples. It will be it will be entertaining. It will be a scrap, but it will be a domination. Because there is no way that I see that Taples overcomes the speed, the power, and the IQ. Taples is good. But the fact of the matter is, is that he's not Stephen Fulton good. And if he's not Stephen Fulton good, anyway showed us that he was levels above Stephen Fulton. We have to give the monster his respect. This man is a beast. Good Lord. Good Lord. Come on, Bateman. Jesus. Catch you in the hands. Jesus. We have to give this man his respect. We can no longer sit behind the statements that he hasn't fought anyone in their prime. He hasn't beaten quality champions. All that's out the window. All that's out the window. It's time for Naoa anyway to get his recognition. It's time for him to get his respect. And he's, he's slowly starting to get it because you're starting to see guys like Javante Tank Davis. You're starting to see guys like um, Shakur Stevenson mentioning his name. That means that he's coming. He's coming. People are calling him the next Manny Pacquiao. And I... You know, I believe that that is a, um, you know, I believe that there is honor in that, but I believe that this man is um, doing his own thing. I believe that this man is setting his own trail. And Manny Pacquiao has some good wins along the way. You know, that Marco Barrera fight, I didn't expect that. I still, to this day, Remember seeing Marco's brother go up to that ring and throw in the towel with, with tears in his eyes. He had to stop the fight. He had to get him off his brother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. You know what I'm saying? So... I understand. You know what I'm saying? I understand. But I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys for checking out another episode of the Gloves Off podcast. Shout out to the chat room. If you're listening to this as a part of the replay, thank you for joining that replay gang gang. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok at Gloves All Boxing, where we discuss all combat sports. Remember to hate 
like, comment, and subscribe. This is your boy, Marcus Los Great. I'm out. I'm on to the next one. Thank you for listening to the Gloves Off podcast, brought to you by IE Sports Radio.